Hopefully you understand what I mean. A number of years ago, two very prominent females died round about at the same time. One was Lady Di. Can anyone else remember who died basically within days of her death? Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa. Yes. Not too many people remember that. Lady Di was beautiful. She was glamorous. The tabloids were always having a field day with her. Then there was Mother Teresa. She was a frail little old lady, one of the Sisters of Mercy. She worked in the slums of Calcutta. She was anything but glamorous. She was anything but physically attractive. The media kind of stayed away from her a little bit because there wasn't much fodder, if you will, for scandal. She died and Lady Di died. And I'm not saying anything now bad about Lady Diana by any means, so, so please, and, and I'm not insinuating anything. Lady Di lived one kind of a life, Mother Teresa lived another kind of a life. Mother Teresa was interviewed by the BBC about 20 years ago. And she said, if you want to see what we do, follow us. And they did. And this one particular day, they followed her into the poorest slums of Calcutta, and as they were walking along, there was an open sewer, and there was a human being laying in the sewer, barely identifiable as, an, as a human being. And she motioned for her workers to pick up this individual, didn't know if it was male or female, and bring this person back to the convent, to the hospital. And as they brought this person back and put this person on, on a gurney, they began to peel layers of rotting clothes off this person who had been laying in a sewer, an open sewer. The stench was unbearable for the, uh, for the reporter from the BBC, and he stood afar off. He said, he said, I wouldn't do what you do for a million dollars. And she said, neither would I. He said to her, he said, how can you do it? Day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. How can you do this sort of ministry? She said, when I look into the face of another human being, no matter what kind of situation they're in, I see the face of Jesus. So when our Lord says, you know, you, you feed those who are hungry, you give drink to those who are thirsty, so forth, you clothe and you visit, you do it because you do it not to them, you do it to me, I am there. He's serious. <laughs> I just want to leave that thought with you. Whatever you do, for the sake of ministry, just remember that you're doing more than positively affecting another person's life. <coughs> you're blessing the heart of Jesus personally. And that's no small thing. People often say to me, how can I please God? And I say, by serving others in His name. That's really it. By serving others in His name. By offering your gifts, your time, your talent, and your treasury to the building up of the church, to the extension of the kingdom of heaven here on earth. I just want to end by saying this. I think one of the primary purposes in the church existing is to enhance God's reputation on earth. God's reputation has taken a pretty serious beating in the last number of generations perhaps. The church certainly has and some of it has been well deserved. Are we a loving community? Are we a welcoming community? Are we a community that reaches out? Are we enhancing God's reputation in the world? As we were coming into the church, the chimes were playing, and there was a woman wheeling her little boy, a toddler, in one of these sort of umbrella strollers. And as I was coming in the church, people were coming in the church, they were smiling, they were laughing. It was a sunny day, and she slowed down, and she was looking. And the little boy was looking. And I thought, my gosh, we got somebody's attention this morning just by standing on the steps. <coughs> Unlimited potential, my dear friends, exists in our community. So just as Mary offered her gift of nardas 
as an offering to Jesus. And just as that nard provided this great, sweet-smelling fragrance that wafted into the noses of those who were present, so may our offering of ourselves, our times, our, our time, our talent, our treasury, all of our gifts, may it be a sweet-smelling fragrance that is pleasing to the nose of those who are close by and afar off. And more especially, may it be a sweet-smelling fragrance in the nostrils of our loving Father in heaven.